Okay, so in my thing, I'm going to make a new class, a new package called stack. In here, I'm going to create a new interface <coughs> called stack 211. Finish. And so that's my stack. That's my interface for the stack. Again, notice that there's no um, size. There is no way of getting at anything other than what's at the top of the stack. We could peek that returns what the value at the top of the stack without changing the stack. Pop, push, I'll pull something off the stack, and push just add something to the top of the stack. So now let's create a new class. And it will implement that. Uh, we don't need a main. OK. We need to fix the problem. So what does the constructor look like? So, oh, I need a private E data and private int top. So we want to say data, this dot data equals, need to cast it into an E, new object. It's a good capacity. Okay. And then this dot top equals zero. Again, indicating that that's the next open space where we can stick stuff in this stack. So now my Boolean empty return top equal equal zero. Or you can say if top equal equal zero, return true, false, or true, excuse me, return true, else return false. But again, I'm lazy, I don't like typing all that stuff, so I do it with a simple <coughs> one line return back. What does peak look like? So we want to throw the exception if it's empty, right? Because there's nothing to return. So if empty, throw new. And I'm not taking points off, but it's uh, it's an empty stack exception, I believe. If you've said no such element, I understand where you're coming from. That's what we're doing for our lists. Great, fantastic, not a problem. Knowing that if it's empty, we can't return anything, we throw an exception, and then we return data sub top minus one. So that's not changing top in any way. We're not mucking with top. Top is going to stay there. Pop. Let's just copy this. But that's not right. So we need to do Or we could remember the thing there and then do the decrement and then return the value, but we don't have to. We can do it all in there. And then what's push? Okay. 
So if top is equal to data dot length, you now you you know it's full, right? Your thing is we can do the what is it? Arrays dot copy. Okay, but so I need a destination, so I need a new data array, right? Zero. Destination will be something zero. And then the length is data dot length. But I need this dest array. Oh, you could do it manually by checking that top is equal equal to zero. I mean, you could do it. You, uh, it may be actually easier to, well, I find it easier to read when you see the word empty versus saying top equal equal zero. But that's me personally. You could say if top equal equal zero versus if top empty. They're both, they're basically the same. The question is whether or not it's easier to read by seeing the word empty, the method empty versus just the what the actual body of empty is uh, as a preference thing. So um, the dest equals the oops. Um, Two times data dot length. Yes, you could have just stuck that new. But you'd still need to do the cast, right? You, you got to basically have this whole thing here. You could put that right where dest. But you still need to sign dest back to data. So you can't do it inside because you just lost the, you just lost the handle on the thing you just copied into. Right? You no longer have anything that refers to that new array. Because system.array copy does not return the destination array. It returns void. So if you put that new in there, you yes, you have successfully copied the data over. You yes, you have a larger thing, but you have no reference to it, and you've just lost it. So you can't assign it back to data. Now that we know it's big enough, data sub plus plus top equals item. Do we need to check to see if we're empty? No, because if it's empty, I can always add something. It doesn't. I just have to make sure that if statement is to make sure that if I've run out of room in my array, I've got to reallocate my array to get it bigger. Any questions? Uh, my interface returns, oh, I should have clicked on it. I think that'll work. Oh, because the push method is just basically saying return whatever was pushed onto the stack. Why? The interface says so. It's, it's another one of those to say, were you successful at pushing onto the stack? If, you, if it returned no, that indicates you did not successfully push onto the stack. You know, again, stacks have, the generic stack has unlimited space, but you could imagine you could have a limited stack that only can store 10 things. So we try to push out the 11th thing on, it should fail. Uh, 
You are correct. I want to put at the empty spot and increment top. Yes? So you can have expression follow the word return? Oh, you can have just return the first to the next the whole line. The, when I say data top plus plus equals item, that says that I'm storing that thing in there and that it will, it returns the item. Right? So like, y equals x plus 2 is y is now, but you could return the value of y. What if you hadn't used the assignment operator? What if you used like plus equals? Then plus, plus equals is an assignment operator. What if return? If it returns the evaluate, it basically, imagine it like this. Right, I am returning the result of evaluating this expression. So the result of evaluating this expression is idle. Because I stored item in the array. And what the result of that is idle. Can we make this void? Not if the stack interface says it's not if. You know, if your stack interface says you return something, no. If we change the stack interface to be void, then yes. We have to follow what the interface says. What's the point of returning the parameter you fed into the method? What if you, like I said, what if, the, what if it failed to add to the stack? You could then check the return type to see that it wasn't what you passed in to indicate that you were unable to push onto the stack. Well, it could be, but, it's, but it could be, like I said, what if you had a limited stack? What if you said my stack can only hold seven things? When you do the push on the seventh, or the eighth time, there's no, I mean, you can throw an array out of bounds exception because you actually tried to add at the end, but there's no other mechanism for telling the user of this method how you did not succeed. Right? You could return null. Or you could, like I said, you could throw an exception, but you should note that in the Java doc, right? That it throws a capacity exceeded exception. Yes, very similar to the add method for this, right? The add at n returns e, right? And the add in the thing returned a boolean whether it was successful or not. The push is similar to add, and the pop is similar to remove. But there was no remove at the end. There was a remove at the index. This is a remove at the top. Yeah, it's, just, and it's, it's like a stack of cards, sheet of paper. You can only add a new thing to the top, and you can only take something off the top. Nope, stacks do not have any concept of getting into the middle of them. You only see this top. You only see the top. You actually don't even have a concept of how many things are in the stack. It's either empty or not empty. I mean, if it's empty, you know there's zero things in it. But if it's not empty, you don't know how many there are. In it. And so stacks are very valuable for being able to reverse the order of things. So if you say A, you put A in the stack, you put B in the stack, you put C in the stack. When you pull things off, you get C, B, A. So you can reverse things. They're very valuable for checking matching parentheses. 
push all your open parentheses. When you see a closed parentheses, you pause the step. So let's say I had a list of uh, strings or whatever. I would look at the entire list of strings. So I would just send it to a stack. What the heck tells me? Yes. If he says, if you want to reverse a list of strings, you, you push the strings from zero to size into your stack. And then while not empty, you pop them out, and you will have reversed the order of your list. That's how you can check for palindromes. Uh, with a list, you can do the same operation. The, the difference with a list is you can't enforce those restrictions, right? With a list, you can't stop the user of the list to get the middle item. They can always take the first item. They can always take the last item. With a stack, there is no way when you use a stack to get into the middle of it. So yes, you could, well, Yes, you can use an array for everything we learn in this class. But that does not give you the same benefits of saying these are the methods that are allowed based upon my vision. Right? So we're talking about an abstract data type or an abstract data object. So it's like this is a specific kind of way of storing data. You push things on, pop them off, they are first in, last out. You have no way to get into the middle. Next week when we talk about queues, they have a front and a back. There is no way to get into the middle of the queue. So I think it's basically a list, but you're always in front, you're all, you know, you're in the middle so far, but you can't get to the things in the middle. We will implement a queue with an array, and we'll implement a queue with a linked list, or a linked data structure. Guess what Wednesday's quiz is? Take a wild guess. Implement empty and pop using a linked data structure. I think. It's got to be, because I showed you push in the practice. So, Any questions? Yes? If you use the Java stack, you probably want to still, well, so let's quit this.